I'm Tony, this is SV Tapatia. We're building this cruising sailboat that you see behind me, a 31 foot 8 inch J Benford design sailing dory, chunk schooner rig. Um, and this week I want to concentrate on the sail drive. I, you know, a while back I fitted the sail drive, it was only ever intended to be a, a temporary fit just to, to get everything hooked up properly so, so it was ready to fit. And uh, coming up soon will be the, the fitting of the keel and for that I need the sail drive out but also I need to do a bit of work on that sail drive. It needs a good painting with epoxy sealer, um, needs a new diaphragm, needs one or two bits. So uh, looking at the sail drive and the first job of course was to take it out again. Yeah so this shouldn't be particularly tricky, I've already taken the gear shift lever off and the wiring loom out of the way just to make some room. Then basically on this boat I've got that rear plate there that's going to come off, the bolts around the diaphragm and four bolts that bolt it to the, uh, to the bell housing thing. And that's basically it really, that half mounting as I say, that plate and the half mounting. And it really should just pop out, that's the theory at least. Here we go. So that's the rear plate off and all the bolts are on the ring there. As you can tell I need to give that a bit of a wire brush off and a paint while it's out. Uh, rear mounting and then the, I think six bolts around the bell housing and it should come out. Well, it's just dawned on me that I need to run a bit of antifreeze for the exhaust system before uh, I take that cell drive off. I could do it a bit after, but it'd be a lot easier with the cell drive on to run the engine up just to, just for a few seconds, just to pump a bit of antifreeze through the exhaust system. So I'm going to stop there. Luckily, I haven't actually started undoing the cell drive. Um, and now I'm going to run a bit of antifreeze, start the engine up, pump a bit of antifreeze through it, and then go and take the cell drive off. Good, so I'll put a bit of antifreeze in there. Right, you remember the little buttons turned on? Yeah. Yeah, okay, do that and wait for it. Yeah. Alright, we're back. Go. <laughs> Good, lovely, thank you. Yeah. I've probably done the job. I expect so. Yeah, it's quite a lot of entries. Have a look down the side there, buddy. It's all, it's all blue. So it's all free. It's uh, everything undone. I had to take that aft mounting off to get it in. I shall try see if I can get it out with it on. I've got a block of wood across the engine bed under the sump, just supporting the back end of the engine. And you can see that the cell drive's already started to come away, so it should be easy enough to get it off. Of course, I can't film me doing it because there's no room in here, but I should now give that a wiggle and it should just pop off with a bit of luck. Yeah, and that's just come off very easily. It's just a couple of wiggles and it was off. So now all I've got to do is lift it out, which is perhaps the hardest bit of the whole job, really, but let's give it a go. Yeah, there it is gone. So this is where the seacock is supposed to be for the, the raw water in for the engine and it's broken off and there's obviously a little bit of galvanic action has occurred around there. The metal itself seems sound enough, but I need to get that, what's hopefully a little bronze thing in there, uh, out without damaging the thread. So, let's see what we can do.
Here we go. Love it. It's locking my I need to get out. In theory, that should go up much. Right? Oh, yeah. Macaroni! Done that up. There's obviously a little bit of corrosion around there, isn't there? Let's see what it looks like. Ah, that one comes on back again. Okay. Look at that. That's where Trudeau will come This one needs a. him. We've got some shells, just turn the camera around a bit. Some shells and a bit of mussel shell there that was all up in there. But with a bit of luck, there's enough sticking out to get it off. That's how that comes off. Just that looks okay, doesn't it? So, this is the plate that holds the diaphragm on. There's the diaphragm that pops on there like that. This one comes on there and holds it all in position. Easy enough. And this plate is held on with three Allen screws or hex socket screws. Um, and two of them came out very, very easily. And as you may have just seen, the third one didn't. Um, and what had happened was this is where the, the, the salt water comes up through this hole from the cell drive leg into this area and through the, the seacock which is at the bottom there and if you look very carefully you won't see it but if I look very carefully there's some staining next to that screw hole where obviously it wasn't quite 
tight and a little bit of salt water has seeped into that screw. The galvanic action there obviously and um, probably stainless screws and as you no doubt know stainless into aluminium in a salt water environment it seizes up incredibly well and that's what had happened so it broke off I say the head broke off left, left about three to four millimeters sticking out three millimeters shall we say eighth of an inch sticking out um, and I tried various things obviously I sprayed a bit of WD in there and there's a little bit of a recess round to the first thread so I scraped that out with a little little pointy scraper thing I tried to get some vice grips on it but there was not enough sticking up for that so in the end I decided to try welding a nut on the top um, I could get I've got an eight millimeter nut there there eight millimeter threads and I could get it on about a third of the nut could get onto the bit of stud that was sticking out and uh, that's what I decided to do this is quite repairable I've put a nut on the little bit of stud that's sticking up and I'm just going to try welding it on just I'm going to try welding it on just to see if I don't expect this to work but I'm going to try A little bit of movement of some sort. I don't know what sort of movement, however. But, um, oh. oh, I thought it worked. Oh, I thought it worked. <laughs> and try again. I wonder. Oh, that feels really. Oh, I've done it. It's worked. It's worked. Oh, that is marvellous. Who would have thought that, eh? Oh, I'm so pleased with that. That's made my day, that is. So I've got this sail drive apart now, and uh, there's a bit of galvanic corrosion around where the seacock comes through. Now, I'm loath to criticise such, such big companies who no doubt use engineers and know what they're doing, but... Why on earth they've decided to put a, a bronze or possibly even a, uh, a brass seacock through an aluminium housing on the sail drive is a mystery to me. Even if it's bronze, even if it's a bronze, which it probably is, bronze seacock, uh, bronze and aluminium are miles apart on the galvanic table. I, I think they're mad. And no doubt it's okay in the short term, but, but um, in the long term you get a bit of galvanic corrosion around where that seacock is screwed into the aluminium housing and, and I had on mine I'll show you it and tell you what I'm going to do here it is I've cleaned it up where the corrosion was and uh, it's all okay there's enough for plenty of meat left on the aluminium it's not really 
degraded it significantly, but I'm loath to put another bronze cock in there. Um, so I want to bung that hole up and put in a sea cock somewhere else in the boat. Actually, it would be a better location because it's very hard to reach back there to turn that sea cock off. So I'll put a sea cock, sea cock in underneath the water strainer and it'd be much easier to get to, it'd be better. So I'm gonna bung that up and um, then there's a the question of material. Obviously you can buy um, brass, bronze and plastic bungs. Plastic's probably the favorite of those, although the melting temperature or the deforming temperature is a bit low for my liking. So I think I'm gonna to try to make one up I've got a set of BSP thread cutters, it's a BSP thread, half inch BS, BSP. I'm going to try and make one up in uh, 660 aluminium and see how that comes out. Okay, doesn't it? Let's try it. Good. That looks really good. It's come just about all the way through there. That's excellent. Just about all the way through, maybe one thread more would be good. Nice, that'd be good.
probably about it, isn't it? So there's the plug, that's the bottom of the plug, and I've just poured a little bit of epoxy over that just to fill it up flush with the surrounding area. It's about half a millimetre of epoxy or something, maybe a millimetre. Uh, and that should be well sealed and in there permanent. And there it is. Uh, I shall hold it up to the camera like that. And it's come out very, very well. I'm really pleased. There's the, the bottom side. You can see that plug there? Hopefully. Looks great. It's sealed properly. Um, and that, I think, is a very good way of plugging those secret holes. Now, just to allay any worries, it's fairly common to plug these holes. The, the water flow up the leg doesn't play any cooling action, not, no, no, no significant cooling action at least. Remember the entire sea, cell drive leg is immersed in seawater so it doesn't get hot. Um, and it's a much better option for me and for many other boats I think to plug these things up and put a, put a seacock, put an inlet in somewhere else in the boat. Um, oh, you do read some funny things in forums. I'll just share this one at the end. Um, Somebody in one of the forums was worrying about the fact that there's no vent on these cell drives uh, and was worried about where the air would go when the oil expands when it gets hot. That's a corker. Anyhow, that's me done for this week. I uh, hope that's helpful to people who have Volvo Penta cell drives. We'll be back next time. Thanks for watching. Give us all that YouTube stuff, thumbs, comments. Hit that subscribe button. See you next time. Bye.